I'm going to be bringing deeper levels of my presence, children, to you. This is a time and a season where you're going to need more of my power, more of my spirit down on the inside of you. There are going to be coming waves of darkness, and you will need my glory to combat that darkness. I want you to see that I am inside of you. I'm around about you. And as the days go on, my love for you never ends. It grows and it grows and it grows. I am your peace. I am your joy. I am the one that you can run into at any moment of any given day. I want you to understand, children, that I cherish you from the very core of who I am. You have a very special place in my heart. Oh, how I long to be with you. How I long for more fellowship with each and every one of you. Much trouble is coming ahead, little ones. Nestle yourself into the cleft of the rock. Get as deep as you possibly can get. I say unto you this night, my children, do not become overwhelmed by the darkness that I speak of. For have I not said to you more than one time, that when the darkness comes, the, the light will get brighter and the light will dispel all darkness. Have I not told you over and over again to, to climb upon my lap? Have I not asked you to be embedded within my bosom? Children, I am with you always, and I mean always. I will never leave you nor forsake you. The angelic host have been extremely busy recently just making sure that each one of you are covered with my pinions. They are running to and fro, making sure that you are protected from all sides. Yes, the enemy is raging, but I want you to understand that heaven is also at work. I am not sitting idly by watching him do his dastardly deeds. I am at work doing what I do best, and that is protecting those that I love. This is the day, this is the hour for you to shine not for you to take a step backwards, but for you to move forward and shine like you've never shown before. You need to stand in the presence of the Lord God Almighty, and you need to receive all that I have for you each and every second of each and every day. I have a secure place for you in my bosom. My bosom is not too small. It can engulf each and every one of you. And I say unto you this night, do not be troubled on all sides as you have been. Give yourself unto me this night and know that I am the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I did not fail them and I am not going to fail you. Listen very intently from my voice each and every day because I have so much to say at this given time. I am speaking more than I have ever spoken before. You will hear me audibly and you will hear me in a still small voice but I am speaking to each one of you. <clears throat> if you are not hearing, then that means that you have not, not opened your ears unto my voice. In tune unto my voice right now, this second, even as you hear me speak, listen closely, listen intently, for this is how I will speak to you in, in the days ahead. Each day, new direction. Each day, new encouragement. For the enemy, he is raging, and the enemy, he is taking out many, many souls that he should not have access to. Why? Because my church, my true church, is not taking her rightful place at my feet and listening to what I am telling them to do. You are not reaching the lost because you are not sitting at my feet Allow me to teach you how to reach the lost. Come, come up hither this night. Sit at my feet. Learn the truth of what's truly going on around about you. 
and then never stray from that truth ever again. This lighthouse is a lighthouse that is set upon a, a hill, and the light is shining forth all over the nations. Many, and I mean many, will come to the footstool here, and they will sit in my presence, and I will perform great signs, wonders, and miracles. And each one of you who have dedicated yourself to me in this place, I, the Lord thy God, I promise you that I will never fail you and that I am going to use you to do great and mighty exploits for me. You have sat and you have listened and you have learned. You have learned a lot. You have learned more than a lot know. You know more than others know. So I am using you. I'm not excusing you. I am using you in this end time hour to go forth, minister my gospel of peace first, love, mercy, grace, and then miracle after miracle after miracle. You are, some of you are ready to empty out the hospitals. All you have to do is increase your faith, secure your faith in the rock, and then go forth. Some of you I have anointed to go on the highways and the byways and to compel them to come in. All you have to do is go and do and be my vessel that I work through. There are so many things that I have given each one of you corporately and individually that you will do for me if you would just believe. Yes, you have faith that it will happen, but you don't truly believe that, that it will happen. You have to believe that it will happen, and then I will do. I promise I will do whatever you can believe me to do. Tonight, the strongholds are being broken down from around about some of you that are still in bondage. Tonight, I am setting you at liberty. My anointing is going throughout this room right now over the airways to set you free, free from all bondage all misery, free from yourself. Some of you have bound your own selves up. I am freeing you. I'm setting you at liberty tonight. Walk in that liberty. Walk in that peace and know that you are mine and I am yours. And together, we will bring in the harvest of lost souls. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It is good to be in God's house tonight, isn't it? He always covers every base and makes sure that we are very well taken care of. Tonight, we're going to be talking about the call to intercession. And part of this is a word that Dutch Sheets gave on August the 8th, I believe. Um, we'll find, I think it's, no, it's August the 10th. And as we go through this, we're going to see some of the things that are going on in the world uh, globally in the United States and also with the church. Many Americans are not aware of the grave violations of the Constitution that are taking place right now against you. What's worse is that we also are the targets of these attacks as well. Started out with President Trump and his, and his staff. Those who hate President Trump see this as an opportunity to get back at the man that they hate. There is a severe division in the church over President Trump. Some people in the church hate him without a cause, and some love him. And I was listening at something today and had to turn it off because they just ripped him to pieces. A church leader. Un un uncalled for, just unworthy. For those of you who don't know, President Trump's home was raided raided on August the 8th, 2022, by the Department of Justice and the FBI. They seized documents and items from President Trump's home that have not been detailed, and if it were not for the video surveillance system in their home, they would not know exactly what was done. And some of the reports say that they told President Trump, you have to turn your surveillance system off in your house. Completely unheard of, completely against the Constitution. They did not allow his lawyers to come in. They did not allow anyone on the staff to come in, anyone in his home. Why? Because they forced anyone in the house to stand outside of the home 
they refused to let the lawyers in so that they could observe what was going on. All of us as citizens, you, have constitutional right to due process. Because of what they're doing to President Trump and his friends, they are setting the stage to do this to you. And you need to be aware of this. Due process is a requirement that legal matters be resolved according to established rules and principles, and that individuals be treated fairly. Due process applies to both civil and criminal matters. They violated President Trump's right to due process when they raided his home. They didn't give him any notice. They didn't contact his lawyers. They just went in there with 30 FBI agents and started collecting evidence. Let's listen at a clip that is going to tell you everything that these people have been doing. And it's important that you listen very closely and very carefully because you're going to see that right now there are a lot of innocent people who are being uh, persecuted by the government of the United States. The reason why this is such an important moment is detailed in Tucker Carlson's show last night. The most important clip, I think, on the internet right now. Now, it is uh, a three-minute clip, but what Tucker does is he goes through the history of the recent two years of Joe Biden's DOJ and what they have done in order to prosecute their political enemies. And ladies and gentlemen, if this does not sound like a broken third world African nation, something that you would read about and say, wow, God, I hope I'm really glad I don't live in Somalia where something like this can happen. If you are not watching this, if you are a leftist and you are not a leftist, but if you're a liberal or just a, a Democrat, and if you can't watch this clip with clear eyes and with an open heart and say, wait a second, something is deeply wrong with America, then something is deeply wrong with your soul. The most damaging clip to ever be broadcast in American history against the Biden regime, Tucker Carlson, take it away. Donald Trump has been swept up by Merrick Garland's Department of Justice. Their homes raided, their personal communications seized and leaked to the media. Some have been arrested and thrown in jail. Donald Trump's lawyers are the primary targets. Today, the DOJ subpoenaed Eric Hirschman. He represented Trump during the first impeachment. Hirschman never worked in the White House counsel's office. The Biden administration is going after him anyway because he gave legal advice to his client, Donald Trump. That used to be allowed. People used to be allowed to have lawyers and speak to them privately, but that's not allowed anymore. That's why the CIA seized attorney-client records from Mar-a-Lago. It's also why the DOJ is now directly targeting Trump's most prominent personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani. For years, the feds have been going after Giuliani's associates, including a man called George Dixon. Dixon was working on a documentary about Hunter Biden. Last year, the FBI raided his home in California. The feds also broke into Giuliani's own apartment, as well as his office in New York. Then the FBI targeted a Giuliani associate called Igor Fruman because he dug up evidence of misconduct by Joe Biden in Ukraine. They sent Fruman to prison. Then the FBI seized the phone of prominent conservative attorney Victoria Tenzing. She'd worked with Giuliani in 2020 to investigate election fraud. They raided her home. Today, the DOJ announced that Giuliani himself is a target of a federal investigation. Why exactly? Well, because like Tenzing and so many others who were now under investigation or under arrest, Giuliani questioned the 2020 election outcome, in this case, in the state of Georgia. Really, questioning the election outcome in the state of Georgia. Isn't that something Stacey Abrams has made a career of doing? Yes. But Republicans no longer have that right. Not long ago, more than a dozen federal agents swooped in for a pre-dawn raid on former Trump official Jeff Clark. They left him on the street in his underwear for maximum humiliation. Then they seized John Eastman's phone. Eastman was also a Trump attorney. He was approached by six agents at a restaurant in New Mexico while leaving dinner with his wife. They patted him down and forced him to provide facial biometric data to unlock his phone. Then the DOJ tried the same thing with Steve Bannon's lawyer, Bob Costello, trying to force him to surrender his privileged phone and email records. We could go on and on and on. The point is, all of this is illegal. It violates the First Amendment. It violates long-established attorney-client privilege. But it's happening right in front of us. A lot. The FBI shackled former Trump official Peter Navarro as he was boarding a flight at Reagan National Airport. He was handcuffed, denied food and water, refused permission to make a phone call to his lawyer. Then because that wasn't terrifying enough, Biden's FBI went after a sitting congressman, perceived as too close to Trump. His name is Congressman Scott Perry. A day after the Mar-a-Lago raid, the Fed seized Congressman Perry's phone while he was traveling with his family. 
They could have called his lawyer and set up something. They didn't bother. They just nabbed him in front of his family. And these are just the prominent victims of this crackdown on civil liberties being conducted by the Biden administration. Of course, in the wake of the January 6th election justice protests, more than 900 people have been arrested and charged with crimes arising from that day. 900, almost all of them nonviolent, almost all of them with no previous criminal record. More than 50 of them have been sentenced to prison so far, including a woman with terminal cancer. Her crime, walking around the Capitol building for a few minutes. And that's just the beginning. There are another 500 cases to go. In fact, the DOJ is getting another $34 million and another 130 more employees just to handle all those cases from January 6th, from the election justice protests. Fourteen hundred people just because they went to D.C. on January 6th have criminal cases against them. And they were completely innocent. How would you like to be in your home with your family, not having done anything and have the FBI break in and demand to have your property, demand to have your phone with no explanation to you whatsoever? Constitution bans this. We, we came here to the United States. We left England, and I'm saying we. They left England because of the oppressiveness of England. We don't want to have this starting here in the United States, but it's already here. It's already going on, and we're under this oppression. The church has a responsibility that we have to pray and pray against this. Dutch Sheets sent out a, a, a news release on August the 10th, 2022, and it was a prophetic word, a couple of different prophetic words. It's titled, We Decree the Evil Plans of the Wicked Will Boomerang Back. The past 48 hours have shocked many Americans. It is worth pointing out that what the left did on 8-8 has never been done in our 246-year history as a nation. When have you ever heard of a president being home being raided by the FBI? They did not do that to Obama. They did not do that to Clinton. Never in our history has this ever happened. And how do you say, hey, Mr. President, you stole 15 boxes of evidence from the National Archives. We were the ones who packed the bags, packed the boxes up. We put them in your vehicle because we know you were busy during the inauguration ceremony. We put all of this stuff in your car, but you stole it. Now, how can a person who has the highest classification for uh, classified documents be considered to be looking at stuff he's not supposed to look at? This is the claim that they're making. Now they're claiming that he stole documents that were tied to the nuclear uh, football. It's not true. It's not true at all. These are the things that we're dealing with. Dutch Sheets goes on to say, my assignment is to, however, is to help us identify what is going on behind the scenes spiritually so we can pray more effectively. He gives the scripture, Hebrews chapter, 20, chapter 12, verses 25 to 29. This is the Passion Translation. Make very sure that you never refuse to listen to God when he speaks. For the God who spoke on earth from Sinai is the same God who now speaks from heaven. Those who heard him speak his living word on earth found nowhere to hide. So what chance is there for us to escape if we turn our backs on God and refused to hear his warnings as he speaks from heaven. The earth was rocked at the sound of his voice from the mountain, but now he has promised once and for all, I will not only shake the systems of the world, but also the unseen powers in the heavenly realm. Now this phrase once and for all clearly indicates the final removal of things that are shaking. That is the old order. So only what is unshakable will remain. 
Since we are receiving our rights to an unshakable kingdom, we should be extremely thankful and offer God the purest worship that delights his heart as we lay down our lives in absolute surrender, filled with all. For our God is a holy, devouring fire. Turning on the lights, still Dutch sheets. It seems that all stops have been pulled out by those who want to completely transform our nation into something other than what we were created to be. They seek to distort our history, remove time-honored moral standards, take over our government, and silence the church. Emboldened as never before, they feel no need to try and hide their agenda. And remember everything you just listened to in the clip. Sending drag queens to teach our kids and the justice and the Justice Department to those who object. This is disheartening, but their unmasking is necessary. Exposure, exposure, exposure. We must continue to pray for the lights to be turned on and the evil to be dislodged. We must also ask God for grace to protect us as it occurs. That Haman's gallows be used for himself, not the innocent. We must pray that all explosions be implosions, the debris falling inward. And yet we must cry out that nothing stops the exposing and draining of the stagnant, putrid swamp. May the odor become so offensive, unbearable, that Americans appeal to heaven for mercy. We must ask that this wake-up call, which is becoming one of the loudest in our 246-year history, finally be answered by common sense, patriotism, and zeal. And I want to add in here, God gave us the Constitution based off of the Bible to run this country. He did that. The founding fathers all believed in, Christ in God. They were Christians. Despite what you hear today in the, in the media and the rewriting of history in the school, this is proven, documented fact that they wanted this country to be a godly nation. They wanted the senators and the representatives and the presidents all to have godly foundations because how else can you rule if you're not a godly person? If you're dark, if you're dirty, you're going to do things that will not help the people. You will not serve the people. Ezekiel 22 Verses 23 to 31. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, say to her, You are a land that is not cleansed or rained on in the day of indignation. The conspiracy of her prophets in her midst is like a roaring lion tearing the prey. They have devoured people. They have taken treasure and precious things. They have made many widows in her midst. Her priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things. They have not distinguished between the holy and the unholy, nor have they made known the difference between the unclean and the clean. And they have hidden their eyes from my Sabbaths, so that I am profaned among them. God's all the time telling us, to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy and to honor it. And so many people do not come into the house of God on the Sabbath. They just ignore it. Her princes in her midst. In her midst are like wolves tearing the prey to shed blood, to destroy people, and to get dishonest gain. Her prophets plastered them with untempered mortar, seeing false visions and divining lies for them, saying, thus says the Lord God, when the Lord had not spoken. The people of the land have used oppressions, committed robbery, and mistreated the poor and needy, and they wrongfully oppressed the stranger. Here this is. So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found no one. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation on them, 
I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, and I have recompensed their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord God. This is where we are at right now. The church is not fully doing its job in praying and interceding. This prayer and this intercession is needed to destroy the works of darkness that are in our leaders. We have to continue. We have to get deeper in prayer. When we pray, we need to pray with wisdom, discernment, and understanding of what the times are. You can't walk around with your head in the sand. You can't pretend that the things that are happening right now are not happening. 1,400 people have charges against them. It's happening. These are just the ones that we know. Are we going to go to the place where, like old Russia used to be, if you said something that the government didn't like, in the middle of the night you disappeared, and everybody knew that the government came and got you? We're on the verge of that happening right now, here in America. Daniel 7, verses 15 to 16, 19 and 28. This is Daniel. I want you to understand the dreams and the visions that God gave Daniel. They weren't pretty. They weren't nice. They had a lot of hard things in them. And we've got to toughen up to be able to take the hard things that God needs to share with us. Verse 15, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to one of those who stood by and asked him the truth of all of this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of these things. Daniel had had a dream, and he was telling us how bad this dream was. Then I wished to know the truth about the fourth beast. He wasn't afraid of what God had shown him. He desired to know the full measure, the full knowledge of what's going on which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful with its teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured broken pieces and trampled the residue with its feet. This is the end of the account. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly troubled me, and my countenance changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. The truth is scary. Daniel wasn't afraid of the truth. He wanted to know what God was doing, and this made Daniel a prophet that God can use. If you don't know, the seer prophetic mantle is being gifted to people right now. God imparted that mantle to a number of you in this church just a few weeks ago. Are you able to handle the deep truths that God is going to show you about hell or whatever it is he's going to show you? Are you able to handle that? You have to be because God gifted you with it. It's a serious thing when God gifts you with something. Are you able to see the deep truths of what is going on? I do not believe that the body of Christ understands what the times are that we're facing. It's unfortunate, but the body of Christ has its head in the sand right now and they do not see everything that God is trying to show them. One, there's the denial effect. Many people don't want to believe what's going on. Many people don't want to see the things that our government is doing to us, and they have their head in the sands in a place of denial. Oh, I'll just wait until the next election. Everything will be better in 2022. After we, after we take back the house. No, we need to do something now. We can't wait till 2022. We can't wait until 2024. Action has to be done now. If we're losing everything, do you see this? We're losing our country. And they're happy about it. They're giddy. Two, the other effect is people are overwhelmed by the truth. And I got so excited when God spoke overwhelmed in the prophetic word. 
because this is exactly where people are at. Thinking about these things can be completely overwhelming, especially when you come to the realization that the protections we use to enjoy as citizens are being removed. Who in their life would have ever thought that the whole country would be shut down for a year and a half based upon a disease? Who would have ever thought that even today people are still uh, in fear of COVID, in fear of not being uh, not catching it, so that everything that they do is tied to to fear? Never. Let's go back to the email server from Hillary Clinton. She completely got away with this crime that should have led to her death. She should have been tried and shot for treason, but she's walking free today. This never happened. Let's look at the double standard that they have placed. This is a case of Petty Officer First Class Christian Saucier, a lawyer for a 29-year-old sailor facing a felony charge for taking and keeping six photos of a submarine's propulsion system, cited Hillary Clinton's mishandling of classified information to the, this week to argue he should get probation instead of jail time. So he took six little, little pictures and listened to what they were, about to, to, they were going to give him. In the case, Petty Officer First Class Christian Saucier was facing up to 78 months in prison for his conviction on mishandling information. Yet she walks around free after having a, a server full of emails and classified documentations. He had only six. She had years and years of stuff. But a federal judge on Friday sentenced him to 12 months instead, as well as six months on low of low-level home confinement, three years post-release supervision, and 100 hours of community service. Many people don't know that Clinton's email server was hacked. They know that the Chinese government got a hold of the information that was in this classified document email server, and they used this information against us as a country, the Chinese. They did it. They're still doing it. They're still using that information against us. We have to understand that the powers that are in the spirit realm are working very hard to destroy the United States of America. They're working very hard to do this. And we must at all costs pray and intercede. We must be the ones that stand in the gap and allow the Holy Spirit to move through us. Now, sometimes the things that people are praying are not right. And we have to confront that. I know that you don't want to hear this, but they're not according to the will of God. You have to be open and honest. And if you're praying and you feel a check in your spirit about what you're praying, stop. Seek God. Hey, is this really what you want us to be praying about? Is this really how you want us to intercede? And I'm guaranteeing you that God will talk to you and say, no, this is, this is what I'm doing. But People in the church don't want to do that. We have a, we have a, uh, a method and a plan, and this is what we think God wants, so we're going to go with that. We have to stop this. Sometimes when we ask God what your will is, he does not tell us because he knows that we're going to argue and try to work against what he is doing. We've got to stop. We've got to stop. If God's saying he's bringing destruction in the area, you, you can't jump up and say, oh, we're going to eat, intercede it away. He's bringing, he's bringing destruction for a reason. The hardness of the heart of the people in that area need a sign. They need a wonder. They need to go through some suffering. And sometimes we're praying wrong, and you're prolonging the inevitable. I'm telling you from experience, the best, best prayers are the prayers that you pray in agreement with God. There are times when the church is working against the Spirit of God because we truly do not understand what is going on in this season. Prayer is going to center us on what God wants, not what we want. 
Prayer is going to center us on what God wants, not what we want. And sometimes it's going to be ugly. It's not going to be pretty. Let's talk about the New World Order for a bit. This is President Biden, March 26, 22 of this year. And now is the time when things are shifting. We're going to, there is going to be a New World Order out there, Biden said, and we've got to lead it. And we've got to untie the rest of the free world in doing it. Where is his heart at? Where is his heart at? Depopulation, Agenda 21. Go to the United Nations website, and you're going to find this documentation. Their own website has this posted in black and white where they had a meeting. They were talking about, we have way too many people here on the planet. What are we going to do? How are we going to sustain? How are we going to have all of these mouths to feed? We got to get rid of some people. United Nations, we have to get rid of some people. How are we going to do that? How are we going to feed everybody? So the conspiracy theory up until this point recently has been 95% of the world is expected to be gone by 2030. How are they going to do this? They're going to release another virus? They're, they're, these people are serious about this. They think that the earth is overpopulated. So you got your abortions going, we're killing people off, killing babies from coming in here. Then you have them releasing these different diseases, killing people off. They're not treating the elderly in the hospitals. In some places when you go, if you go to the doctor, oh, you're too old, there's nothing we can do. Go fend for yourself. This is the mentality that has been bred into our society today. And it's not only here, it's in different countries around the world. This is very serious. This is an article by the Washington Post. This is another thing that they believe is going to happen. A Russia nuclear war could starve 5 billion to death, study says. We're starting to edge up to 95% of the world being gone. Some two-thirds of the world could starve to death in the event of a nuclear war between Russia and the United States. According to Rutgers' study, lead study, that was published this past Monday, nuclear conflict would lead to catastrophic disruptions in food supplies. This article was two days ago. This is current. Even a smaller scale nuclear war between Pakistan and India Remember, right now, Pakistan and India, they're not getting along, and it may come to blows between those two. Even if that were the only thing to happen, it would devastate food supplies. It would slash global production by 7% within five years. In that alone, that small-scale war alone would kill up to 2.5 billion people on our planet. They're happy about this. To prepare for greater global instability, countries must move away from traditional farming and diversify their food sources. You know what they're doing in the United States? They're going to the farmers and they're saying, we'll pay you not to plant anything this year. All of your expenses. They are telling us in the wide open what exactly is going down how they are going to execute Agenda 21 today. We, we got to wake up. We have to wake up. Back to Dutch Sheets, Boomerang. A trusted prophetic friend sent me a brief word this morning accompanied by another powerful passage of Scripture. She said, I hear the word boomerang. Evil is about to boomerang back on the workers of iniquity and evil in our lands. Holy Spirit then led her to Psalms 7, 14 to 17, and this is in the Passion Translation. 
Look how the wicked conceive their evil schemes. They go into labor with their lies and give birth to trouble. They dig a pit for others to fall into, not knowing that they will be the very ones who fall, who will fall into their own pit of failure. For you, God, will see to it that every pit digger who works to trap and harm others will be trapped and harmed by their own treachery. I will sing my highest praise to the God of the highest praise. I believe that there is a word from the Lord. We must continue to believe that God is exposing evil in return and turning the tables on the evil one. Let the shaking and exposure continue. Still Dutch sheets. A great wind is coming. I conclude with, with one another. I conclude with one other short word from the Holy Spirit sent to me last week by Sally Jadlow, a chaplain in Kansas. Batten down the hatches, for a great wind is coming. It will blow the chaff out from the wheat. In order to put the wheat in my barns, a time of great shaking, a strong winnowing is coming. The chaff will be blown away in the strong wind. The time of separating has come. My cup of wrath grows full, even to the brim. Those who have thought themselves so clever will discover their utter folly, their foolishness. The first tricklings of the avalanche have begun. So minute, many have not yet noticed it. Others who are on watch see its beginnings, but cannot fathom the magnitude and scope of its ruins. The downfall will be great. It will cause many to turn and repent. For others, they will only go farther into their sinfulness, cursing me with even their last breath. Do you all see that? For others, despite everything that God is doing, will be doing, the shakings, the winds. For others, they will only go further into their sinfulness, cursing me with even their last breath. It's sheep and goat time. Those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. The others will go to condemnation. Each one may make his choice. I would that all would be saved, but each one makes their choice. We're not going to read Matthew 3, 7 to 12. This talks about the... Uh, this talks about the threshing floor where God is sending his wind and threshing out the wheat and causing the unquenchable fire to come forth. And Matthew 25, 31 to 34 talks about the sheep and the goat being separated. Dutch sheets goes on to say, keep praying, heaven is responding. Pray with me. God of consuming fire, pray with me. This is Dutch sheets. We appeal to you, just as our founders did two and a half centuries ago. We boldly declare that you are our victory. Our faith is not in our ability to overcome evil. It is in your ability. You have already declared the end of this story. And you will see that accomplished. As those who want to force you from our midst once and for all become more and more emboldened, we realize you are allowing them to build their own gallows. Like Haman in the book of Esther, you will expose them and they will fall into their own traps. Like Esther, we accept the responsibility of being born for such a time as this. We will not run. We will not fear. And with your help, we will not fail. We pray for those who are standing against evil. Strengthen them 
Give them wise counsel and strategies. Thank you for the stand of President Trump, who kept his word in appointing three pro-life justices. Because of that, we now have seen the reversal of Roe. Move upon the hearts of the Americans to put righteous men and women with backbones of steel in government positions. People who will say with our founders, we pledge to each other our lives, fortunes, and sacred honor towards seeing America fulfill all she was destined for. Expose evil, shake down evil, in unrighteous systems, in sin revival. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, the winner. The winner, amen. Our decree. We decree as we have before that the evil plans of the wicked will boomerang back on them. Father, we thank you for everything that was taught tonight. We just cover this message and this word in the blood. We pray, Father, that you would make us intercessors, the ones who will hear your voice and do everything that you're asking us to do. And, Father, we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to take this, make a decision on your own that you're going to pray and do exactly what God is asking you to do, to be an intercessor for him. What we need to understand about what's going on is they're trying to get us, you know, arresting all these people. They're trying to get us to walk in fear so that we won't stand our ground for the truth as we know it. So please, whatever you do, don't walk in fear. God's already said he's going to clean out the swamp. So what we need to do is just stand on the solid rock, as he told us to, and just keep praying until we see this all come to pass. <laughs>